Hey everybody, let's go over a little bit of um, machine setup. Um, let's say you just got your machine and you want to know how to get it threaded and how to get it going. Okay, so you've got your handle under the table attached. So when it is closest to me, this is far away, this is closest to me, we call this the six o'clock position. When your handle is like this in the six o'clock position, your machine, oh, see, I'm a little crooked here. Okay, there, six o'clock. Your machine, this is the nose of your machine, this little piece here. You can see it on your machine. Not all machines are the same, but they all have that piece whether you have a Cornelli, a Singer, or in my case, I have a Mauser. So that's the nose of your machine, and that rotates when you rotate the handle under the table, okay? That's how you control the direction of stitching. So this little piece here, I'm gonna call it the nose. When you're sewing, that rocks back and forth. You can't really see it now because it's going towards and away from you. Now if I turn it to nine o'clock, you can see it. This little nose piece rocks back and forth, and that's what drives your foot when you sew. Anyway, okay, so we have the handle under the table at 6 o'clock, and you have the nose at 6 o'clock. That's how you set up your machine to start. Then your needle is, sorry, the light's in the way. Is Your needle bar is here. I have a little label on my needle bar that tells me what size I'm using. I happen to be using a size 8 needle. Um, this is your needle bar. This is the screw right here. This screw is what you tighten down to hold your needle bar. This one has a, a regular screwdriver screw. Some machines have a thumb screw. So when you want your needle to be in your machine set right, how do you do that? Do you see my needle is just sticking out right here? This is the nipple part here above and this right here is the tip of my needle. You can see the tip of my needle is just sticking out um, I guess maybe about the width of this paper clip, a millimeter or something. So when you want to know if you got your needle set right, you rotate your hand wheel. And on these machines, oh, sorry, let me zoom out. On these machines, the rotation is away from you, okay? So it's rotating away from me. That's how these machines work. Regular sewing machines spin in the opposite direction. This one, the hand wheel rotes, uh, rotates away from you, up, up, over, and away. So anyway, I'm going to rotate my hand wheel. That makes the nipple go up and down, all right? So I rotate my hand wheel until I see my nipple in the highest position where it's not moving. It's, it's not that hard to do, but you have to try it a couple times. So that's down. And then the hand, the, sorry, the nipple's coming back up, and then it starts to go back down. But I want to get it so the nipple's in the highest position, okay, on the way up. So my nipple's coming up, and just before it starts to go back down, I see the needle poke out. Now I, I've got just the tip of the needle poking out, and that is where you want it to be when you're sewing. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm making you dizzy. So you want to have just the tip of your needle sticking out. Um, you can set your needle a little lower, but sometimes it'll get caught on your fabric. So I always run with my needle in the highest position. Okay, now your needle, it has a, a hook in it. So um, let's pretend that this is your needle. At the bottom, there's a hook. It's kind of like a little crochet hook or something. So when you put your needle in for chain stitch, you want the hook like this facing you. Okay, so the hook of the needle, that's what catches the thread on the way up. It should be facing towards you, not to the side, not to the side, but towards you, okay? And when you're doing moss stitch, the hook actually gets turned and it faces away, but I'm not gonna talk about moss stitch now. So you want the hook of your needle pointing towards you like this, and then you put it into the shaft. You make sure when you put your needle down that it's not hitting the edges of the needle plate. I have my uh, needle and needle plate on the largest hole because I was doing three thread embroidery, so I have it on the, a really big hole. You probably don't need a hole that big if you're just doing one thread. But I don't know if you can see the hook of my needle is, uh, you can't see it. It's, I don't think it's gonna come in, but the hook of my needle is pointing towards me. So that's how you set your needle. Um, 
to start threading your machine. Just want the tip of your needle sticking out, okay? Now I'm gonna go on to threading the machine, but hopefully that answers your questions about how to get your needle in and get set up. And then you just tighten the, that screw on your needle bar. Um, normally when I put my needles into my needle bars, I will put my needle into the bar and then I will grab the needle with a pair of flat jewelry pliers and I'll hang on to the needle and I'll use my other hand to rotate the needle bar to make it tight. That should be enough to keep your needle from rotating while you're sewing, okay? So now, sorry, I'm going to go on to how to pick up your thread, okay? I will be right back with how to pick up your thread. Hey, everybody. I wanted to talk to you today about threading your machine and kind of go over the ins and outs. Um, basically, this is a looper. It's the part that's under the needle plate that you see moving when I rotate the handle and the hand wheel, okay? So basically, I wanted to show you what the looper actually looks like. It, um, sorry, it's, it's basically like this, and the worm gear meshes with these threads, and it makes it rotate, okay? So when you look down from the top of it, you can see, hopefully it's in focus, right here is the notch. And that's what we're calling the notch in the looper. So your thread comes up through this center hole and you pull it out and it gets caught in this notch. And then this notch is what makes your thread rotate around and the needle goes down and picks it up. So that's your notch. So when you're timed for chain stitch, your notch will be around 1230, one o'clock something. When your handle's at six o'clock and your hand wheel has rotated the needle to the highest position. When your time for moss stitch, it's the opposite. When your hand wheel has rotated the needle to the highest position and your handle under the table is at six o'clock, the notch will be down here. But what we're doing today is for chain stitch. So the notch should be located about in this place when your handle's at six o'clock and your needle is in the highest position, okay? So now this notch, that's what you're gonna see moving under this plate. So I'm gonna zoom in, and hopefully you've got enough light here, okay? So I'm gonna take my threading wire. Well, sorry, first I have my handle at six o'clock and I've got my needle in the highest position. What that does is that gets that notch and the looper out of the way of the big hole. So I can take my threading wire and put it down into the big hole. So I just put it down Sorry, put it down into the big hole. I'm reaching under with my other hand and I'm hooking it onto the hook, uh, hooking it onto the hook of the threading wire. And I'm gonna pull it up. Oh, I need a little extra slack. I'm kind of doing this, uh, I usually do it with my other hand. So I hook onto the thread with my hook, uh, threading wire and I pull it up through the big hole. Oh my gosh, it's like comedy hour. Um, I pull it up through the big hole and uh, I hold on to the tail, okay? Then I rotate my handle under the table to nine o'clock, okay? That makes it easier to pick up the first stitch because of where the big hole is located. So now you can see right here, you can see the notch in the looper is showing. So when I have rotated my handle under the table to nine o'clock, I can see the notch in the big hole. That tells me that I am timed for chain stitch. If I rotate my handle under the table to nine o'clock and I do not see any notch, then I might be on moss stitch, okay? So for now, we're on chain stitch, we see the notch and we're good. So what I do is I kind of lift the thread up, sort of, and make sure that the thread will get into the notch. So I've rotated the handle under the table to nine o'clock. Now I'm going to rotate the hand wheel on the machine. And you make sure that the hand wheel on the machine goes up and away from you. These machines, the hand wheel rotates the opposite of most sewing machines. So you put your hand on the hand wheel on the machine and you rotate it away from you. The notch, you will see starts to move 
and it goes away from me and then it comes back. And now as you see the notch pass through the big hole, just make sure your thread is in the notch, okay? And then the needle, meanwhile, the needle has gone down and it's now the needle is on the way back up. So hopefully it has caught my thread and I may feel a little tug on the thread that I'm holding in my hand and I can see the needle picked up the thread and I continue to rotate the hand wheel until the needle gets back up to the highest position. Now I need to get the thread off of the hook and get ready for sewing. Okay, so I let go of the thread tail and I put my hook under, I'm using a paper clip. I can reach under and pull out some slack in between the spring and the looper. That makes it easier. Now I pull my thread out and it all comes up through the small hole and then I continue to pull until that entire piece of thread comes off of the needle. Now my thread is through the small hole and I am ready to begin sewing. For this, I've taken the foot off just so you'd have a better view. So I, I realize you can't, I can't start sewing, but I just wanted to kind of show you this. And now I would just put my fabric under and I would begin sewing. It may be easier, uh, sorry, I cut, I cut the thread tail off so the thread flew away. Um, it may be easier for you to begin sewing towards nine o'clock because if you are in this position and you rotate the handle around a bunch, it may unthread your machine. And once your machine becomes unthreaded, there's no way to get it back into the notch without stopping and taking your project out and rethreading. So I'll just do that again one more time. I'm gonna pull my thread back down below the table. I'm gonna turn my handle to six o'clock and I'm gonna make sure I'm going to rotate it with the hand wheel one entire rotation. The needle's in the highest position, and I have a clear opening here in the big hole. I'm going to put my threading wire down into the big hole until I can feel it pass through the, and out the bottom of the looper. I'm going to take my thread and hook it onto the threading wire, and I'm going to pull it up through the big hole. Then. I'm going to turn my handle under the table to nine o'clock and then I see the notch. I'm going to now take my hand. I'm still holding on to that thread tail. I, you can't let go of the thread tail. I'm going to put my hand on the handle and I'm going to rotate the handle up and away from me. I'm watching the notch now and I'm making sure that my thread gets into that notch and I continue the rotation and the needle has gone down and it's coming back up and now the nipple comes up and I've caught my thread in my needle and now I'm done and then I take my hook knife or in this case paper clip and I start to pull the thread off of the needle and out the small hole okay now I am ready to begin sewing just put your cloth under drop your foot and go okay um, I should mention that uh, when you're doing this, it, it just helps to be able to see in there. Um, and now I'll, uh, I'll back up a little bit and, and kind of go over that with a little more, uh, a little less um, zoomed in so you can kind of see more from above. Sorry, let me put my, my light back up on my machine here. Okay, so my thread is hanging down below it's threaded it's going through my tension device and it's hanging down here after my spring okay i'm gonna put my handle to six o'clock so it's facing towards me as close as possible and i have rotated the needle so it is in the highest position i'm gonna put my threading wire down the big hole so it comes out the bottom of the looper. Okay, see, it's right there. And I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna hook it on the threading wire. Okay, oops. I'm gonna hook it on the threading wire. Okay, and then I'm gonna pull it up to the top. Hopefully, don't fall off. Okay, I'm a little stuck here. I'm gonna pull it up to the top, okay. I'm going to hold that. I'm going to take my 
hand and put it on the handle. And I'm going to rotate the handle to 9 o'clock. So you can see that this part of the machine, I call that the nose, is now facing to the left to 9 o'clock. I'm going to hold my thread tail. Okay, I'm going to hold my thread tail. I'm going to put my hand... Sorry, I'm going to have to put my elbow on that thread tail, I think. <laughs> no, I'll just hold it here. Got it in my phone hand. I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to put on my hand wheel. My belt's not attached right now for the demo. And I'm going to rotate the hand wheel up, over, and away from me. Okay, so I'm rotating the hand wheel up, over, and away from me. And at this time, my needle is going down and hopefully it's picking up my thread. So I keep rotating my hand wheel away from me. Okay. And the needle has picked up the thread. Now I'm going to reach under the table. And right here, I'm going to pull out a little slack. So I'm pulling on this, and it's pulling it through the tension device and off of the spool. Now I've pulled out some slack. Okay, I'm going to come back up here, and I'm going to take my, my very expensive paperclip hook knife, and I'm going to pull the thread off of the needle. Okay, and pull that whole thread tail off. And now I'm ready to sew. If I had a foot on, I could sew, but I don't. Just stick your fabric, lift your foot up, stick your fabric under your foot, drop your foot down, and start sewing. Start sewing in this direction first. It might make it easier so you don't drop your first loop. Okay, I hope that helps. I know it was a long video, and I'm sorry, but hopefully that makes more sense. Okay, thank you so much for watching.